Hello there, welcome back to Friesland. Last time, well, we conquered Lothling. We get one from a <laughs> one promise miner to, well, four promise miner with two vassals and a strong ally. So basically, if our ally was actually teamed up with us, we would have some pretty neat borders. But uh, for now, we'll have to focus on constructing our cores. Galera is, uh, well, already been. Uh, we already have had one piss off from uh, the Austrians on Galera unlawful territory and we have a new election and I think we'll go with Johann Wilhelm on Schelling Kaut because we do need those diplomatic points due to what the what we chose for the first set of ideas here, influence. Now I should probably find this guy to get the money required to pay back my loans but the better relation over time modifier although little will definitely help with keeping the uh, coalition at bay is what I'm hoping so we'll keep him in office for the time being. I'll stop the relation improvement with the Hansa for the time being again. Also to just help out getting Oldenburg a little bit up and running here, which should be which should be, well, useful. We'll of course put someone back at work with the Hansa pretty soon. But for the time being what I will be doing is just sit down and wait. As you see provincial out unrest here. The Bremen nationalists uh, will rise up in approximately twenty years. These guys will rise up in approximately ten years. Uh, th a lot of thanks to that uh, unrest, but we can of course solve that by using military points, we can just give them some more autonomy, so if it gets close to a potential revolt I'll just raise the autonomy a little bit and that will potentially help it, a lot or help it out a lot. We'll just have to see what I actually end up doing here. I'll just have to keep a close eye to this page and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll weather the storm, we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. Over extension of course will and the war exhaustion do actually play a uh, play a minor role in all of this. So once that gets down, we will probably have a lot uh, an easy time, uh, well, controlling these guys. So I'll just sit by and wait. If something interesting happens, I'll uh, get back to you. But I don't have any plans of attacking anyone. I don't have any plans of conquering anything. I'll just sit back, repay my loans, and I think I actually have to fire the guy to make sure that I can actually repay my loans without losing or getting even more inflation so for this time we're going to sack him although it's not really that beneficial to us uh, 0 0.3 a year it's not a lot but it is uh, it is definitely helpful so again I'll sit back we'll allow the loans to be repaid and once they have been I'll get back to you so we can actually take a new idea here and we're going to do that right away claim fabrication time traffic claims minus 33% that's actually quite beneficial because less of time means that less of a chance of being spotted. And thus, saving ourselves from some aggressive expansion. Really useful. We do still have 10 loans, I believe, so it's still going to take a while before everything is paid back, but uh, we'll sit back and allow time to pass. I guess we can take some inflation for some points. Uh, if you consider it, you get half for 0 0.50. In theory, you get 200 points over the course of, well, one reduction. So, you do earn, in theory, which is kind of awkward here. But uh, we'll reduce by 2%. I kind of prefer to keep it low, although I probably should have uh, left things as they were there. But, uh, yeah, I'll focus on paying back my loans and uh, I'll formulate a plan on what we'll do after that uh, next most likely a war it looks like against Burgundy which could definitely be an interesting thing to to witness but uh, if I do that I definitely definitely need France on my side we'll see how uh, how it goes what we figure out if we can get England on our side we might actually be able to pull something off but uh, we'll wait we'll sit we'll wait peacefully or patiently and we'll see what we end up with here we're currently in line for a third idea here and with this we get an increase in production efficiency as a whole by 10% due to our German ideas and also integrated elites gives diplomatic annexation costs minus 25% which means that annexing Münster now will be a lot cheaper. I'm also currently working on trying to get myself an alliance here with the French due to my power, freezing army, freezing navy not really likely, we have a force limit of about 8 I believe, yeah 8 so we still have a while before the autonomy it's low enough for us to get complete benefit of these promises. I've actually had to raise it here in order to avoid a revolt, but that is fine. We are getting closer to the annexation on Minster, uh, for instance. And as you can see now, it was uh, 
it is a bit cheaper now thanks to the idea set. So I think for now, in order to increase my power to actually make France consider uh, me being well, an ally that they can that they can use, we are going to most likely focus on getting most likely Oldenburg and Münster annexed pretty soon. And I'm going to wait until I actually have diplomatic power to do so. I opted for keeping my uh, guy in power, giving a little bit of boost of the stats, mostly due to the fact that we had 100% or 100 Republican tradition, and uh, more or less I felt that it would be, uh, well, beneficial since you get 50 admin, diplomatic or military points, you get one of the three, not all three, uh, by keeping someone in power. So when you have 100% you probably can, well, Give a, give a little bit. Of course, national unrest and stability cost modifiers are something you have to take into equation. You really don't want to allow your republic tradition to get too low. So, uh, keeping that in mind, you probably uh, probably should be a little bit careful with that, per se. Now, these guys are kind of a stubborn uh, stubborn crew. It's going to be kind of hard to get them. I'll have to wait until the changing of the year. And I'll probably have to send a gift of 25 so that should be enough to allow me to start the annexation of both of these as soon as we get past December so I'm going to start the annexation of both nations uh, then and uh, then we'll see if we can actually after that uh, get in ourselves into an alliance with the French because we are definitely getting closer and an alliance with the French will give me at least some benefits unfortunately that uh, what you saw there the event or yeah, event minus 20% to aggressive expansion is something that will last for a little while, and it's a direct uh, result of the of the three that we chose. As you can see, it lasts for five years. So if I go to any wars, it, sh it will definitely be uh, it will definitely be, be beneficial to me to have that. However, for now, as I said, I'll start the annexation of these two, and uh, hopefully, it won't be uh, too long before we get ourselves in alliance with the French and potentially a war against Burgundy. We'll see how it plays out. Time for an upgrade to military attack here to level 5, standardized pikes, with that we get an increase in combat width by 2, infantry shock by 0 0.15, and we get some new, well, types of infantry. Might as well go for a straight up upgrade of them, well, right away. Don't have much morale to brag about at the current time, but uh, I guess that's fine. We're going to go with longbow here, they are more or less the, well, in between. Unfortunately, Oldenburg I didn't actually consider, but I can't actually uh, annex these bef until 64. So we're going to be waiting a while because annexing a member of the Holy Roman Empire gives, first and foremost, a malice of 25 because you annex a member of the Empire, and then another vass, due to it being another vassal, you get an extra 30. So it's going to be quite hard to annex Oldenburg if I annex uh, Minister first. So we're going to wait here. The French do, however, seem to be, well, quite close to joining me in uh, an alliance. So we'll see how this plays out. So as you can see here, the Hansa, your faithful ally, saxe lauenburg and Pomerania. Brunswick and Pomerania, along with saxe lauenburg is potential targets, or, well, it's going to be part of the war. And it could be a little bit awkward here, because as you can see, uh, well, it will not be awkward. My forces will make swift work of them. And since basically I'm the war leader, I can't really get anything out of this. As far as I know. Kind of a weird system, the new one. So I will not bother. Since, well, I can't get anything out of saxe lohenburg so we're just going to lower the armor maintenance, and I'm going to hide in Münster, in case Pomerania sends something by ship, which is improbable. But I still will not take the chance. So I'll just sit this one out and hopefully my uh, it won't take too long before the war is over. I've also started improving relation with uh, Bohemia for a potential alliance with them for, well, conquest of uh, the northern area here. I'm definitely going to take more or less the German area as a base of operations before we take on Burgundy, I think. We'll just have to see what I end up with here. Well, the war was over more or less as I stopped speaking, which is kind of interesting. But, uh, it wasn't really that interesting at all. The Hansa, or Lohenburg, will give the Hansa 10% of their income. 
and they will annul the treaties. That's it. Nothing really interesting there. Now, state propaganda. This is an interesting one. Aggressive expansion impact minus 20%. This will be really useful for future, future well, conquest. So will actually these things as well. Diplomatic relation plus one, envoy travel time. Subject force limits contribution. This one is interesting, especially considering that we will be vassalizing our way through the empire. So a lot of these things are really, really useful for conquest, which is what we will be focusing on. Now I will take tech 5 here, constables and temples, allowing me to build them. I do have a inflation guy and I also have a military guy, more or less just for the extra points. We are still making a little bit of money. But uh, yeah, we have come to the point where I can annex, I believe, both of my vassals and I'm going to go ahead and do so. There was one thing here I didn't actually take into consideration with the new system. I actually forgot to tell this is my uh, own video as well. Once you actually annex a subject, you get minus three to your diplomatic reputation, and it's really important to have that high because it actually influences, as you can see here, uh, agreements. Diplomatic reputation minus ten for the alliance. It also gives you a slowdown to, as you can see here, the well annexation of uh, other vassals as well. So what we're going to do here is actually, I think, see if we can get ourselves a diplomatic reputation guy. And this is actually going to be quite expensive. But we'll soldier through. So again, this guy will more or less offset the negatives. And the goal is just to get the uh, guys annexed, and we'll probably get rid of about half of their army. All in all, I'm going to be losing forces uh, by what I'm doing, but hopefully I can make up for it in the future. So uh, we'll just see how this goes. Again, it will take 10 years to get rid of that minus 3 diploma diplomatic. So worst case scenario, I'll sit by for another decade, basically just relaxing, improving relations with people I would like to have allies with in the future, etc. And again, just cause minus 20% aggressive expansion impact. Basically, I have minus 40% now, thanks to well the idea and that thing. So it could be really. If you manage to stack them like that, they will be hilariously, no, they will be hilariously useful. Protect against Burgundy. Save Dutch people in Breda. I think we'll protect and then we'll cancel. Let's see if we get something better. However, there has been another election and I decide to keep the guy still. We'll probably get a new one at the next election though. And uh, then we'll allow Republican tradition to get back up to a hundred, and then we'll probably do a double, double take again, just to keep a fairly good ruler for quite a while. Basically, he'll be sitting for ten years or so, or five years, but he has been sitting for what fifteen years soon. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. For now, however, we'll wait for the annexation to complete, and uh, I get claims on my rivals, which is a claim on Holstein, which is weird. But uh, again. Do I actually have six cardinals? I actually have the most amount of cardinals. That's an interesting one. Well, doesn't matter. Uh, we'll save up some more papal uh, team magic here, and hopefully we can get some, well, out of all of these. The one that's really useful here is Beautify Local Saint. So we'll be saving up points for that, although it will probably take quite a while. We'll see how it goes. Now another thing that's kind of interesting to note is that when you annex a vassal, as you can see, the autonomy will be 75%. If you annex someone, it's about 50. So basically, you have to consider that now. Pure conquest will, in most cases, at least outside the uh, Holy Roman Empire, be more beneficial. With this, my force is currently nine. So I had to get rid of the forces. It will just keep on growing, though, as the autonomy in these uh, provinces go down. However. I don't think I have any interest in actually forcing it down as it currently stands. I don't have enough unrest, 9.48. I will do it in one province. Because as you can see here, just a single province like that will make it possible for these guys to rise up in 3 and 33 years. So I think I can actually afford to do it in, well, all three of them. But this is kind of also to show the example of how the system works. For now it's just Bremian nationalists, but there will be Munster or Mysterian one as well, because I do have a little bit of unrest here. And again, it will take a while before they rise up, but uh, 
it's not really much to be considered. They're actually part of the exact same thing here, as you can see, so that's why it takes 111 now. So, if you have a high autonomy or unrest to begin with, minus close to 10, it will most likely, in most cases, uh, benefit you from lowering that by force. And as you can see, my force limit here has already gone up by 1. But uh, for the time being, we'll just sit by and doing what I originally planned, which was to, well, befriend, if you will, the uh, two nations that I would like to ally here, the French and Bohemia. So I'll keep on uh, working towards that end, and uh, we'll see how we how we end up here. Potentially getting an alliance with England is probably not the worst idea either. So I'll keep that mission around, but this is the end of this episode. We have created a, uh, well, interesting freeze land, although we haven't actually fought any wars. We have gone a little bit over how the rebel system work with autonomy. Autonomy is basically just the higher it is, the more you, well, pay from your coffers, so to speak, to... You don't really pay anything, less you gain from each province, per se. You could say that it is a percentage-wise lowering of uh, the worth of the province, if you will. So, provinces with zero autonomy are more worth than a province with well, 47. In theory, these two are about equal, and as you can see, they are in uh, in the total here. And that is a fact. So, again, the plan here now is basically just, again, keep quiet for a while until the coalition starts dying out, which is 10 or 20 years away, and then we'll probably keep on conquering. What I'm thinking here is vassalizing uh, Brunswick and potentially Brandenburg, if they are well, at a manageable size, we'll just have to wait and see. For instance, if we manage to complete this and just find demands minus 50%, we'll make it a lot cheaper to actually vassalize Brandenburg. So, at least that's what I think it was. We'll just wait to see. Worst case scenario, we'll make it cheaper to actually force demands, but it uh, doesn't matter. Either is fine. So, for now, we'll wait and uh, we'll see what we'll do next time. I'll see you then. Bye. Feel free to comment any comments, praise, criticism, anything you feel like, though. And I'll see you next time.